Hey guys, OGL Bind here, bringing you guys my AP Academy Season 2 Week 8 battle against Mid in his Kentucky Tour Cats. Um, very cool dude, be sure to go check him out. He makes pretty consistent content and pretty high quality content at that. Um, he has a very, very scary team in Academy and he's doing pretty well with it. He has M Mega Mewtwo X, Geneseg, Zygarde, a bunch of terrifying threats. Um, but yeah, if you guys do want like a more in-depth you know, breakdown of the matchup, um, as well as our sets and you know what I think he could potentially bring as well as our many many transactions I highly suggest you check out the team builder that went up yesterday I believe it was um, if you're gonna watch a team builder at all this season please watch that one that one's going to have the most jam-packed information and the most important things you know concerning our season going forward and all that stuff but with that being said I do want to um, give a quick little rundown of my team and the six my opponent brought as you can see, we are unfortunately playing on Showdown. Um, we tried to play this game twice on Wi-Fi. We DC'd twice, and at that point, um, you kind of have to give up on Wi-Fi for the day and uh, just recreate on Showdown and play out from there. So that is unfortunately what we had to do. Next week, we will be back on Wi-Fi. Spoilers, um, so you don't have to worry about that being here for too, too long. But like I said, I do want to uh, just let you know a quick rundown of the team I brought if you haven't watched the Team Builder, but again, I highly suggest it. Uh, we are bringing a Choice Specs, Nagana Dell, a Belly Drum, very, very fast Lanoon to outspeed a Zygarde so we can outprioritize it with E-Speed, a um, just a 4 attack standard Mega Manectric, a Rest Talk Dual Stabs, Kabia Berry, Primarina, a bulky, uh, bulky Attacking Stealth Rock 3 attacks, Pile of Swine with uh, Crash, Earthquake, and Ice Shard. And then a Taunt, Foul Play, Roost, Toxic, Mandibuzz right here. Well, the six my opponent elected to bring, um, very, very typical of what I expected him to bring, but he brought the Muck Alola, Mega Mewtwo X, Genesect, Swampert, Zygarde, and Zapdos. Now, right off the bat, um, looking at his team, it is absolutely, absolutely terrifying. Um, but going into this game, I essentially I'm gonna lead off with my Mandibuzz because it's something that could put on a lot of pressure on his um, on his potential Mewtwo lead, and I don't want to lead something that would put me in a bad position on that. He's gonna pull the switch out into his Zapdos, which is a pretty likely switch on his end. Um, so I did end up going for the Toxic. I didn't figure he'd want to leave in his Mewtwo, depending on what I wanted to go for. I'm gonna pull the switch out into my, my Pile of right here as he goes for the pretty obvious U-turn. Good play on his end, um, but there's not much uh, I could do about that. I didn't want to risk my Mandibuzz. Now right here he goes into his Genesect. And this is the scary thing about Genesect because I have no idea what his set could be. Um, he could be Physical Scarf, Special Scarf. He could be set up. He could be, um, you know, a plethora of things. You know, this thing is absolutely terrifying versus my team. But if he is physical, I actually always love a hit. I can get out my rocks um, and, you know, threaten him like that. However, if he is a special attacking variant, I do drop to a flash cannon. However, uh, I am going to stay in. I figured he might be, you know, somewhat specially oriented, you know, with like T Bolt or something like that for my team. Uh, for stuff like Primarina, Mandibuzz, things like that. But he's actually going to reveal the Flash Cannon, and he's going to clean knock out our Pilot Swine, which is very, very big and tough, because now we play this game without rocks, which makes it really, really hard to put pressure on um, a few of his mons here. As I'm going to go into my Manetric, I'm going to double out on the Swampert coming in, because I figured it was a pretty, pretty likely play, um, knowing I probably would have HP Ice, and even if I did have HP Grass, I probably wasn't going for it there, um, being that he had a lot to switch into Manetric still. Uh, now right here, you're gonna see just pause it really quick to let you guys know uh, We DC uh, a little bit after this, but in the game um, He actually ha revealed to be toxic pert, but I wore him down with moon blasts um, To the point in which that it didn't really matter because I got up to full and I actually uh, Was out of rest turns due to sleep talk and stuff like that So to recreate that he's essentially just going to spam rocks right here uh, because I ended up at full and uh, wouldn't have been able to, wouldn't have been uh, rested anyways next time I clicked a move. Right here, I'm just going to spam it as he just, you know, keeps getting up his rocks and stuff like that. And weakening this pert is great because now it means he uh, doesn't really have a great, uh, great sturdy, sturdy check to my manet check. Uh, other than Zygarde, which doesn't want to take that HP ice, obviously. So right here, the pert is finally going to go down after spamming rocks for a good five turns right here. And he's going to go out into his muck. Now right here... Um, what I'm gonna do is uh, stay in uh, as he actually ends up doubling out expecting me to go into my mandibus probably I stayed in because if he knocked off I could take it very well and if he poison jabbed I could take it very well as well because I am could be a berry So we're able to get a big chunk off on Zapdos, which is really really nice uh, It's gonna let me pull a switch out into my Naganadil as he goes for the heat wave 
Um, don't know exactly what he was expecting there, but you know, I'll take it. Maybe he was expecting the Lightning Rod Manetric. But I am going to go for Specs Dragon Pulse. Going to be able to knock out this Zapdos, which is absolutely amazing. That thing was a pain for me to deal with, especially with no Pilot Swine as he sends out the muck. Now right here, I'm just going to keep clicking Dragon Pulse. If I can weaken this thing, um, it puts me in a really nice spot potentially. He goes for the knockoff, knocks off my specs, which is pretty nice actually because now I'm able to just drop a big Draco on this thing and get a big chunk off on it. But he is going to be able to knock me out with another knockoff right here. Um, unfortunately, we lost Naga, but it did break through his team very, very well for us right there. And it's going to let me go on to my Lanoon. Now this is probably my best and only chance to set up with Lanoon. I know the Genesect is still very, very healthy, especially being that no rocks went up. But if I can chunk that thing, I can still potentially win with, um, you know, the mods I have in the back. As he's going to go for, um, I believe, Poison Dab, I think it was right there. And I'm going to go for E-Speed and knock out the Muck, which is obviously really nice as he goes out into Genesect. Um, I'm just going to stay and go for E-Speed, get as much chip off on this thing as I can. As you see, it does 63% which is pretty, pretty insane, uh, but he is going to be able to knock me out the flash cannon, which is very, very unfortunate, um, but, you know, Lunoon did end up picking up a kill, which is more than we could ask for. I'm going to go into my net trick, and I'm going to click flamethrower. I figured he might want to save this, but I suppose he didn't have a great switch in otherwise. He's just going to go for the scarf flash cannon, revealing that he was scarf, but I knew I took that, obviously. Going to be able to go for the flamethrower and take out the Genesic, which was really scary in the end game. It honestly could have just beat me once this thing got chipped, but out comes the Mewtwo X, um, as I believe I just go for a Volt Switch right here. Yeah, we're gonna go for a Volt Switch because I can save this for Intimidate, uh, you know, Intimidate Fodder on, you know, his last two mons if I really need to. Gonna go out into my Mandible because I am still very healthy. He goes for the Drain Punch. You're gonna see it does a huge chunk, but after Leftovers, we can definitely take another one and get off a big, big hit as he actually reveals the Thunder Punch, which we live on 2%. We go for the Foul Play, do a good 60, which means he can't recover off our damage. However, this is very, very tough because this means that our Pre-Marina does not take on this thing as well as we really want it to. He's gonna go for another Drain Punch, knock out our Mandibuzz, but it delayed this thing to the point where we can still um, potentially win with our pre-marina because it can take a hit from either one of these mods and beat them 1v1, but we need to get damage off. He's going to go into a Zygarde on my um, Mega Manetric because of the fact that, you know, uh, his Mewtwo was minus one. He probably didn't want to stay in because then pre-marina definitely just won at that point. I'm going to go for the Hidden Power Ice, bring this Zygarde down very, very low, and, um, you know, it's going to end up just being pre-marina versus the world here. Now, this is a very, very... Uh, precarious situation i can still potentially win depending on his set um if he is not a uh, banded set and he's not super 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 invested we can actually live that into a t-punch from the mega mewtwo um and potentially knock out both of them right here however you're going to see right here that he is actually a choice banded zygarde he's going to do a giant giant chunk to me however i'm going to be able to knock him out with the moon blast right here however i'm sitting at 28 percent and in my head at this point in the game I'm thinking um, I 100% lost. I, I think, you know, he, all he does is he comes in, he clicks Thunder Punch, and he knocks me out right here. Um, I'm at 28%. I obviously don't take that. I don't take any hits from this thing at this point because of how uh, ridiculously strong it is in all honesty. But um, I, I realize right here also I have not shown my item. But uh, my play in this is obviously just click Moon Blast and hope for the best. Maybe he, you know, clicks the wrong button, misclicks and clicks uh, Bulk Up or something like that. Maybe even recover, trying to get greedy, or I don't know, trying to stun or something like that. As he actually goes for the Zen Headbutt and misses the Zen Headbutt. I remember when I was looking at my screen, scream, I, I, I legit screamed when this happened. Because I was caught so, so off guard that we won this game uh, when he went for the Zen Headbutt. I talked to him after. He went for this because of the fact that I didn't show my item. He thought that I might be Wakanberry. And if I was Wakanberry with max, max bold, um, he actually had a better chance of knocking me off the Zen head. But obviously, uh, you know, it has that 10% chance to miss, but he only had a 70% chance, percent chance to knock me out with a Thunder Punch at that point. However, I, we, we, me and you, you know, the viewer, breaking fourth wall, we both knew that I was Kabia Berry. Um, and even if I was Wakan, I know that I... Uh, I actually took 96 min from that 90 uh not 96 it was a 96 percent chance to knock me out from that range so regardless for him his better uh chances were to go for the thunder punch there however he doesn't know my spread exactly i hadn't really taken any hits other than the zygarde and it's pretty hard to tell from that point um so i understand why he made the play i don't uh necessarily know if it was the best play in the end but i definitely do understand his thought process behind it and we will definitely take that w uh brings us up to four and four here in academy which is absolutely phenomenal able to get our win with our get a, able to get a win with our first uh 
in our first game with our new team, which is obviously really, really, really nice. Primarina just putting the team on its back, picking up a kill against Zygarde and Mega Mewtwo X to win the game off of a pretty, pretty freaking lucky Zen headbutt miss. I do feel sorry for my opponent uh, mid play this game really, really well. Um, up until that end where he misses and headbutt like even if he um you know made the wrong call on my item or something like that he still should have won that game 90 percent of the time however that is rng and that's pokemon so again like i said we'll take those but if you guys did enjoy this roller coaster of a game be sure to subscribe um like the video all that stuff stick around so you can catch our games as they go up every single week like i said next week we will be back on wi-fi where we go up against our buddy blin and his canberra clay Cray dailies again i butchered it um, like I do every time I play him, which is like every week now. But yeah, um, hopefully that's a really, really good game as well. He's a terrifying team. Blin's doing pretty well in Academy as well. And he's just killing it in Mons in general. So we're really going to have to bring our A game to that game. But yeah, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. But I'm going to get out of here. Later.